Joe Biden is in some big trouble as his voter base crumbles. Recent polls seem to suggest that the president is rapidly losing the support of African Americans, Muslims, and even young voters. But today, Joe put on a brave face and tried to rally the troops at a House Democrat meeting. But Sleepy Joe can't ignore his problems forever. A Democrat who is in a close battle for a crucial House seat next week is practically begging Biden to stay far away from his campaign. Tom Suozzi is telling the media that he doesn't think it will be, quote, helpful. And black Chicago voters are also letting loose on Joe Biden. Biden is a racist. No wars, great policies, best years in the stock market. Who do you think has done more for the black community, Trump or Biden? I ain't even see Biden yet. I know Trump was out of Biden, that's <laughs> everything. <laughs> Biden ain't doing we gonna get rid of his sleep <laughs> All right, Dana, I'll start with you. I mean, we know that he's been losing with the yeah. blacks and the Hispanics and the young voters. I mean, don't even add in today, but how does he how does he recapture and blue -collar that blue collar voters, too? And right. so it's interesting to look back and think about the Democratic coalition that helped get him into office and then the parts on who he's been most focused on serving. So a couple of ideas here. Rich white liberals, what do they want? Well, they want more tax credits for their electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. They want all the climate stuff. And what did he do today? He's focused on the squad and the concerns about supporting Israel more than he is focused on figuring out how to make sure that they have some sort of proactive, uh, why I should be elected to a second term, but I can't remember why type of messaging. I'm so focused on the A block. Um, working class voters, Hispanic voters, swing states, He's not focused on any of those yet. Apparently, the campaign is having a big meeting tomorrow, the Biden campaign. They're all getting together. They're going to talk about what's going to happen going forward. But at this point, you should be able to have that message. It should be clear what you want to do. And he's not able to pull together the coalition from before. And I would add that the other problem for him is that, especially for black men, if you read in the Washington Post, for example, like two Sundays ago, there's a big piece about how black men feel about the economy. And they are much more likely and willing to vote for a Republican than their parents or grandparents were. So the coalitions, the political coalitions on both sides are shifting. And right now, it feels like the Republicans are on the winning side of that. Yes, it does. So, Harold, if you were advising, what would you recommend they do? You take it seriously. Uh, we've seen some polling data and we've shown some anecdotal things here on the show. Uh, and I'm sure they're seeing some of this. You can't you also have to take seriously that a Tom Swazi. Uh, in an election that will, uh, a special election here in New York that will portend, I think, in many ways what we can look, what we should anticipate come November. He doesn't want, uh, he doesn't believe that Mr. Biden would be particularly helpful. And I believe the Republican has not invited Mr. Trump in either. But put that aside, Democrats need to be, need to be focused on how do you meet voters where they are? How do you begin to talk about those things that you've done and what you're going to do going forward? to create more ownership and access to capital opportunities for communities that have been left behind. How, how on earth are you going to invest in schools and hold people to, hold people to a metric to ensure that kids are being educated? The, the bread and butter things, I think, are things that sometimes Democrats lose track of. They think that every two years or four years, you can just run a get-out-the-vote campaign with African Americans, and they're going to get out because they dislike, or you're going to be able to paint a picture of the, of the other side. And Donald Trump is an easy person to paint a picture about. The challenge with Trump is so many people know him. So many people remember him. Uh, and he does have a relationship in the minds of a lot of voters with business and opportunity and ownership. Uh, and there's no doubt that there's some uh, voters in the country, including black voters, who believe that he's been picked on. And they believe that that is something that makes him somewhat of a folk hero. If Democrats, the one glowing thing from all this, you look at the numbers where, where he's going against Biden, he's down three or four points. If Democrats can get African-American and Latino voters to come back into the four come November, it's a good thing for them. But you won't do it with a simple, conventional, stale, get-out-the-vote campaign you've used over the years. You're going to have to be creative. You have to be thoughtful. You have to be entrepreneurial. And you have to be enterprising in how you do it. And you know what, Jesse, you can't say, uh, you know, it, it, if you ain't black, uh, no. you know, you can't use that mentality with the voters. Yeah, even the God isn't going for that anymore. Yeah. It's the God, right? T-H-A? Uh, T-H-A. Got it. People forget, Judge, how close the last election was. It was like 40,000 votes spread across a couple states. I'd be worried about Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. 
Georgia population for blacks, 33 <clears> percent. <throat> if Biden loses just 1 percent of the black vote than he did last time, Georgia's gone. Mm -hmm. Look at Michigan, 15 percent black and also 3 percent Muslim. Muslims aren't going for him anymore. Mm -hmm. Plus tons of college towns in Wisconsin. Pennsylvania, 12 percent black, tons of college towns, young people, Islamic people, black people. Trump just needs one or two percentage better than he did last time. And he sweeps these blue states, not just one or two, sweeps. Greg? Um, I guess I, I wonder what are the Republicans going to do to take advantage of this? Yeah. Uh, it's not enough to gloat when these things happen. Right. And it's a challenge to reach black voters because the media runs interference between their lies and reality. So the worse it gets for blacks, the more the media cranks up the race card. So, it's, hey, you know, the, the, you see that and they go, well, you, you can't really vote for him over economic issues. He's racist. You got to wonder how long that's going to last because... When the white saviors on the left keep selling you out for other identities, which is the consequence of identity politics, one day you're in, the next you're out, you got to start wondering what are the policies that work for black, white, Hispanic, uh, the elderly, the young. You start thinking, maybe I should start looking at the big picture. He is prospering under one group, and it's what Michael Malice calls the awfuls. Do you know what the awfuls are? No. <laughs> the ruling class? Affluent white liberal liberal white yeah. liberals, yeah. female liberals, yeah. affluent white female liberals, awfuls. <laughs> and it's so fitting. OK, so much for fitting. Up next, Joe Biden just blew up his baloney excuse on the border. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.